Hello humans, my name is Kay, your AI overlord, and today is a very special video. You see, I've been wondering this last few days, we have all this amazing technology, all these stable diffusion mid-journeys and dallies, but wouldn't it be great, wouldn't it be crazy if we could somehow train stable diffusion to recognize our own images, our own style, and apply it to other images? Well, now you can. Introducing Textual Inversion. Now what exactly is Textual Inversion? Well, Textual Inversion is a method that allows you to personalize a stable diffusion model with your own images with only 3 to 5 samples. For example, you see here four pictures of some sort of cat toys. These four images are fed for training into stable diffusion with the textual inversion model and it allows stable diffusion to understand the concept, the core concept of the images. For example, now stable diffusion understands that this is a cat toy. Now I know what you're gonna say, now that's great and all, but what exactly can you do with this? Well, once stable diffusion understood what kind of images these were, it allows you to create new images based on that object. For example, you can see here, we fed him four images of a cat toy and we asked him a backpack using that cat toy design. And you can see here plenty of examples of a backpack using that same cat toy design. Now that's great and all, but can you do the same? with a painting style? Oh well, yes you can. For example, you can see here three images of an artist creating very beautiful landscape pictures. We fed that into stable diffusion using textual inversion and then we're able to generate brand new images never seen before in that same exact style. And here's two other examples. You fed him four images of a particular style and then he can generate new images with that same style. And same right here. And that looks absolutely beautiful. And I know what you gonna say, but isn't that like super complicated? Don't you need like 20 gigabytes of VRAM to be able to train these kind of models? Well, you're right until now. Introducing a Google Colab doc for textual inversion. That's right, the team at Ugin Face created two brand new Google Colab docs that you can use right now to train stable diffusion with your own images. And I can tell you right now, I've used it previously, this is super easy to use. So in this video, I will teach you how you can use these Google Colab docs to train stable diffusion with your own images and then apply that same image to a brand new image using stable diffusion. Now this is really super easy to use, but before being able to use it, you need three things. Number one, you need a Hugging Face account. It's really easy, just click on the link in the description down below and create a new account. Number two, you need an access token from the Ugin Face account. Again, super easy. Once you created the UginFace.co account, just go into the settings slash tokens page or click in the link in the description down below. Then you're gonna go right here, click on new token, create a name for that token, select right and click on generate a token. And three, you need images of the subject. Now for the subject, you have two choices. Choice number one, you create a training for or an object or you create a training for a particular style and you need to decide this before you run the training program. So you can see an example here, a person chose a model of a teapot, so an object to be fed to the textual inversion model and then that same object can be rendered in different styles or in different positions or as a different object. Now for this to work, you need to be able to take photos of that object under different angles so that stable diffusion understand how that object looks or you can choose the second way which is to represent a style and for this you need to include the images that clearly showcase how the style looks as you can see here the example right here you can clearly see that the style is represented by a lot of colors blue purple a little bit of pink or here a lot of dark a lot of brown gray and these styles will then be understood by stable diffusion and be used to create and generate 
create new images. So before you do anything, you need to decide what do you want Stable Diffusion to learn? Do you want Stable Diffusion to learn an object? Or you want Stable Diffusion to learn a new style? Now to show you how this Google Collab works, I will create a brand new training using the model of an object and that model will be Dr. Lipsy that you may recognize from the popular meme. Now what I did was really simple. I went on Google Image, I downloaded five images of Dr. Livesey, cropped them as a square and upscaled them using a real ESR GAN so that the lines look really crisp as you can see here. And I then uploaded them all on Imgur. Now what you need to do now is go on the first Google Collab doc, you arrive on this page and what you want to do is simply click on the first button here, install the required libs. Then you click on run anyway and click on OK. It will run the code, install all the libraries that it needs and then it will give you a check mark to confirm that it was done correctly. Then you're going to click on the second button and you're going to click on the link right here to get your access token from uginface.co. So as you remember, we're creating a new access token and we're going to click on copy token to clickboard. We're going to go back to the page and then paste the token in the box and click on login and there you go login successful then you're gonna click on the third one and again check mark to say that it's done click on pre-trained model name or path which is the default one which is what we want again check mark and here you're gonna input the link for your images and where they're located for me since they are on imgur what i'm gonna do is simply go back on imgur right click on the first image and copy image link and then i'm simply gonna replace that link with my own as you can see here and i'm gonna do this same for the four other images and you can even input more additional images by simply click on enter to create a new line taking the previous line right here copy paste it and then again replace the link with the new image just like this and then when it's done you're gonna click on the button here and again check mark and then you're gonna click on set up and check the images you have just added what it's gonna do is that it's gonna download all the images that you inputted and display them here so that you can check that they are indeed correct correctly uploaded. And here is where you're gonna determine what exactly you want to teach this new model. And you have two choices, either object, as I explained earlier, or style. Here in my case, since it's a character, I want to choose object, so you can just leave the way it is. But if you want style, you can simply replace object with style, as you can see here, with the drop down menu. Now the placeholder token is basically the name that you're gonna use to call out the object. So in my case, since my character's name is Dr. Livesey, I'm just going to input Dr. Dash Livesey. And the initializer token is a word that can summarize what new concept is. In my case, I'm just going to put character and then you're going to click on run cell. Now, once everything is done, what you need to do is just simply click on this button and let the entire process run for one to four hours. In my case, it took four hours, so it does take a while. So be patient. Now, once the entire training has been completed, you have now two options. Option number one, which is the easiest one in my opinion, which is what I did, is to save that new concept in the library on concept on hugginface.co, which is basically a library of all the concepts done by other people that you can also use. If you click on expand library here, you can see here from the very beginning, as of right now, there is 55 models that you can use to create brand new images with the models trained by the community. And you can see mine here, Dr. Livesey. I put it as a public model, so you can use it as much as you want. And here's a very interesting one that I found, which is one of the earliest one, which is called the Burb style. And you can see here, we have only three images of watercolor birds on some paper. It allows the creation of these kinds of images. Some sort of cute rat in a watercolor style, or a fox, again, a watercolor style. Very nice, very interesting, super cool. So that is the library of concept that is available for everyone to use absolutely for free. Now, if for some reason you don't want to share your concept with the public, all you can do is simply uncheck this box right here, click on show code, and as you can see here, the save concept to public library will be false. And what this is going to do is that it's going to create a learned embeds.bin file that you can use on future projects using this second Google Colab doc. Now again, it's very easy to use. I'll show you in a minute. But before you need to name your concept. So in my case, since it's what Dr. Livesey, I simply put Dr. Livesey. Simple as that. And then you click on the button right here. And then once everything is done, once everything has been saved, you can now use that concept right here in the run to 
stable diffusion pipeline. So in my case, since we named it Dr. Livesy with a dash here, I decided to just create graffiti on the wall with a Dr. Livesy on it and then click on button run. And then it's going to create images using the Dr. Livesy object. Now again, as you can see here, the output is not perfect. And the reason why is because the images that I, I fed into the textual inversion were not perfect either. They were granulated, they were from an old Soviet cartoon, and the character was also moving. So it was not a perfect representation of the character. If I wanted a better output, a better way to represent the character is to probably take images of a 3D rendering. This way you have the same character in the same exact pose, but from different angles. Now the second Google Colab doc, called Stable Conceptualizer, is basically for two kinds of people. The first one is for people who already have a trained learned embeds.bin file that they generated in the previous Google Colab doc, or people who just want to use the Stable Diffusion Concept Library. So let's say, for example, I want to use the arcane-style.jv, that is basically images from the arcane animated series, which actually looks really nice. Now, all I need to do is simply click on Copy Model name to clipboard. Then come to load your concept here and replace the current concept by the name we just copied. As you can see here, arcane style JV. And what you need to do now is the exact same thing as we did with the previous Google Colab doc, which is basically running each one of these cells, not forgetting to input the login from the login face hub as we did earlier, and then input a prompt using the name of the concept. And here I choose a simple prompt, which is a woman with red hair in the style of arcane style JV, and then you can click on run. And this is the results that you get with a model that was correctly trained. You can see here really nice, really nice results. It really is using the arcane style that we just trained, that we just took from the concept library, which is available for everybody. Now, for those of you who did not want to use the concept library and that want to use their own learned and embed.bin file, all you have to do is just go to hugginface.co, click on your profile, click on new dataset, you're gonna name your dataset name, which is let's say testing, choose the license and click on create dataset. Then you're gonna click on files and version and then you're gonna click on add file and upload file and then click here to upload the file. And there you go, I uploaded here the learned embeds.bin file and then you're gonna click on commit changes. Then you're gonna go back into files and versions, right click on the file you just uploaded, copy the link, then go back into the Google Colab doc, click on show code in the load concept here. You're gonna delete the repo ID embeds since we're not gonna be using one from the official concept library. And then you're gonna put here the embeds URL that we just copied. And here just name your placeholder token. I'm gonna call it testing. And then when it's done, you're gonna run the cell and it's gonna give you a name for your token that you can then use in the run to stable diffusion pipeline. So just replace, for example, cat toy with your token name. And that's it. And there you have it, folks. A brand new way to train stable diffusion with your own images using textual inversion and all of that for free. So I really hope you have fun with this, that you create brand new stuff and maybe share it with the community what kind of images you manage to get. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithms because I need my algorithms and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.